Hello and welcome to another episode of m &H Consultants. On my left, of course, is M. Anita Menon and I am the H. Ron Howard. Um, we've had a lot of guests, quite a lot of guests now, haven't we? We're, yes. Yes. And all of them are talented, but today we might have possibly the most talented. Yes. I understand <laughs> our guest is a, a president of the Rotaract Club, a business coach, a trained classical dancer. Yes. Obviously, we'll not ask her to do any of the dancing. <laughs> And an entrepreneur. Yes. yes. Um, it is breakfast banter. You will see that we don't have any breakfast yet. That is on the way. <laughs> anyway, Anita, please introduce our special guest. I think you've introduced her already, Ron. <laughs> but um, just to add my two bits, I've met Tanima only on two occasions so far. And both these occasions, she's managed to impress me entirely. Okay. And I, I think she's one of those young leaders who are so inspiring and, and you're somebody who's such a role model to all the young people in Bahrain and wherever else you've been, you know. So, um, so Tanima, please, we are really fascinated by your journey, um, you know, so far. You've done so many things and you, you're not even 30, I think, right? <laughs> so, how, I mean, what's the driving force behind all of this? Like, how do you get going? Thank you. At first, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the questions as well. Uh, it's lovely being here with all of you. It's really kind of you to invite me as your guest. Our pleasure. <laughs> yes, entirely. Um, I think the driving force is, are my parents, my mother, my late father, my people, everyone around me. And, you know, just keeping the hope and faith alive for the future generation. That's so important. And I think that's one of the biggest driving force to move ahead and do something. So, so um, like you said that, and it feels like you're somebody whose sights are set so high and not just for yourself, but you want to give back as well. So do you want to talk about that a little bit about giving back? Giving back? See, giving back is very important. I, that's what I feel because Today, if, if I have like five pieces of bread, okay, I don't mind giving four away. Why? Because I'll get double in return, double the love, double the work, double the power. When, when you are trying to move, when you are trying to go ahead in life, what goes around comes around. You cannot be selfish. Like, okay, this came to me, I'll just keep it to me. And then the cycle stops, the circle stops, the chakra stops the chakra of good vibe and good energy in the world stops. You should never uh, let that stop. You should keep on giving back to your community, to your society, to the people around you. You have to empower them and we should help each other. So never the cycle should stop. So that's how you move ahead. If, if I'm going up like this in my life, getting something, I should not be like, okay, I'm on top. No, you should pull up others as well. And we all should be going moving forward because if you have to go a long way, you need to be in a group alone. How long, how far will you walk? That Just... is true. What do you say? Then? <laughs> I would say absolutely. Although that hasn't been the way I've lived my life. That's why I asked you, what do you think about that? <laughs> like, if I've been on top, I've absolutely brought nobody else with me. <laughs> uh, no, that's true. <laughs> I'd be fair and open with it. And it's good to learn from these uh, successful guests of ours that they have a different attitude, yeah. a more of an all-encompassing attitude, helping <laughs> others. But you asked me the question, I'm fair with you. No, I haven't helped others. <laughs> it's just exaggerating. <laughs> uh, so, Tanima, do you think that your Rotaract experience has helped you build this personality or is it something that you've always, you've always been like this? Um, I have always been like this because um, that's something... Um, that's something that I have got some values and core values from my parents and something that has been with me always. I have been part of the Mother Teresa Foundation as well. I have worked with them as well. And as well as I have worked in the Interact Club, the Rotaract Club in Canada and US. So I have had a pretty much exposure. And I think when you are giving back, you don't have to see any organization or platforms. You just attract 
you just attract it just comes your way it just comes your way yeah. you find people because mm. giving back should not be limited to any organization or people yeah it's uh, it's something related to you as a person right it's not related to anything so if you are there yeah obviously there are a lot of takers i can understand when you are giving 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 you get tired like okay but believe me i kid you not in this journey you find people who become your support system you develop a friendship you develop a, a, a leadership in this as well where you find similar leaders around you who are doing the same thing right. and receiving so much in return and that blessing is something you no matter how much money you earn in your life you can never get that is something that uh, you take away at the end of your life can That's i make I a believe. point on that i yes. think one of the big big differences there you just mentioned it is about being a leader I never wanted to be a leader. Yeah. So I was never leading anybody. I was only leading me. Yeah. But that's that's in a way I think everybody has a different way of looking at things and you know ambitions and goals for themselves. True, you know? true, true. So if, if you've been somebody who's more concerned about your development and your progress and and that's not wrong either. No. You know. And to be honest um, being part of Rootract is something I have really enjoyed. it's not because uh, okay it's a platform for giving back or something i have always considered rootract is like a movement movement a youth platform a movement of the youth where we consider the voices should be heard mm. where all of our voices should be heard and we can do something together from all of us coming from different areas and yeah. parts of life and the concept of service above self is something that something that inspired all of us and being part of this organization we have been associated with so many amazing rotarians who have supported us guided us mentored us it's uh, it's been a beautiful experience so did you approach rotract uh, consciously uh, no. or did it no, no, just no. happen it just happened okay. uh, i remember uh, there was an event uh, they called me for it and then they asked me if you joined for the next and then they asked me if you could be a part of it and that's how okay. So one thing led to another led to journey. another led to another and it became like a family at the end of the day you develop a family and friendship like no other That's in amazing. this community <laughs> so uh, i believe that um, so I, do you want to ask a question john well just the leadership yeah i still don't know about what businesses that you're actually into okay. yeah let's just have some background <laughs> about what all you do i know you do a lot of things so um I am the chairperson of Alba Group of Companies. Uh, we deal with electrical, electrical services, all kind of electrical services, maybe okay. installation or anything. Also, we are into construction as well. So that's regarding Alba. Is there anything else you do apart from these two businesses? Uh yes, I'm also a business coach. Okay. And I am a certified business coach uh from uh France. Okay. So International Coaching Federation. of France so i have Where done you do your coaching online okay mostly online is, now is, is that oh. successful touchwood so far <laughs> right touchwood so far it has been a very blessed experience and uh, my clients my people are very nice and very kind to me and uh, it's nice to learn from them i would say coaching is not something that i'm going somewhere that i know it or no it's something that i think we are learning from each other I learn a little from them maybe there is something cuz there is no end to learning right there's no yeah. end to learning you just keep on learning i'm just here i'm just here to learn as much as i can and maybe in this process if something is there i can give as well why not a little bit of time so uh, we wanted to address the question the golden question of leadership right though it's rhetorical i guess I, I, well i i just we do we do already done that because uh Tanima is obviously a leader and I was saying I wasn't <laughs> yeah. for reasons why I shouldn't yes so I was okay with uh, no actually um what I believe is a boiling water same boiling water which can make a potato soft can make a egg hard so it's not about the circumstances is of what you are made of and I believe we all are leaders in our own way in our own unique way yeah legends are made <laughs> yeah legends are made but leaders we all are leaders we just need to understand our potential yeah. i just felt that leadership was too tiring 
<laughs> yeah, Rich bringing other people along with me. <laughs> do, do you think like that at times that leadership and being a leader and leading people is tiring sometimes? Do you feel no, like that? No, that's where I said we all are leaders in our own way. That's how we support each other. We empower each other. And suppose if I am tired, I have a shoulder. So we all are there with each other, holding each other's back, okay. and we are moving forward. And that's how we are trying to skip all the hurdles. We are trying to jump all the hurdles that's coming in front of us. There is a leader born or nurtured? Leaders are definitely, as I said, everyone are born leaders, right. for sure. It's just that they don't know what potential. You need to tap that potential. It's all about the mindset. It's all about the mindset, to be honest. I'll tell you a small um, story of my father and me. Um, as a little girl, my father always, you know, all the fathers tell you, sing a lullaby. Mm -hmm. We have this, when you go off to sleep, you sing a lullaby. So my father always used to sing this lullaby where, uh, Oh, uh, me being his little princess, there's going to be a prince coming and a riding white horse is going to take you away to a fairy land and uh, it's going to be beautiful and all. So I grew up with that concept. But um, when my father was um, suffering from cancer, he was in his last days. In his last days, I requested him to sing that lullaby again for me. Then he told me that, um, did I ever tell you the meaning of this lullaby? I'm like, it's a self-explanatory. Is there any meaning of this? It's the self-explanatory. My dad is like, no, I never told you the right meaning of this. I always told you a prince is going to come in a riding horse and take away. It's not because you are the princess. I forgot to tell you, you are the kingmaker. You are the queen. The prince is not coming to take a princess. It's coming to be the king. And you are a queen with your kingdom. And never forget that. I never forget that. Mm -hmm. And that changed the mindset of how I look into things. And it did. Like I was not that, you know, that princess, that damsel in distress. Suddenly, yes, I am the queen with the kingdom. And I have my people as my pillars. And in this journey, I have met more people who have become my support system. And it has been really a blessed journey. So what I hear from you is that leadership doesn't need to be a lonely journey it's actually a very <laughs> i'm just saying that it's not a lonely journey I didn't say it was a lonely journey i <laughs> said it's bringing people along with you that yes. i never wanted to do and i think that uh, it's not just about responsibility alone it's a lot of other things uh, in it True. being a leader True. um so you think that uh, if somebody's mentored into a leadership role they are far more successful than uh, somebody who's never had that opportunity. As I said, it's all about mindset. And and as I said, there's no end to learning. Mm -hmm. You need you need to learn. You need to be open. And plus, you need to accept things rather than expecting a lot. You need to be realistic as well. Mm -hmm. That whatever circumstances you're getting, you need to accept it. We need mentors to remind us that. That don't go overboard with whatever situation that's in front of you. We need people who are ready to share their knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I meant with the cycle and the circle. People, a lot of people, like experienced people, they think as if, okay, we know it. We're not going to teach you. You learn from your struggle. But why? There is a saying that more you share, it grows. The knowledge, the more you exchange, it grows. You're right. So if mentors are like that, and I have been blessed, to be honest, I won't lie. I have been blessed with a lot of mentors in my life who has helped me to pass pass very difficult phases, many hurdles. So I'm very blessed. So I would definitely say having a mentor does help a lot mm -hmm. because, and that mentor doesn't mean have to be like a person who's like very well known or a mentor can be just your friend, mm -hmm. can be just your parents, can be just your next door neighbor, can be anyone. Uh, can I ask, you're, you're the chairperson of at least two companies, correct? So that means you're leading them. Do you face any extra hurdles because you're a lady? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, the, the first hurdle. And I might ask you the same <laughs> as well. <laughs> oh, oh, it's a long journey. I'll have oh. an answer first. <laughs> okay, the first, I would say, being the only woman on the field on site. I'm the only woman in the construction and on field. 
right now I don't find, of course, there are interior and architects who are there in office, but on field in the engineering, I don't find many. In the construction field, I'm the only one. The first difficulty, I can't find a place to pee. <laughs> I, 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 I know what you mean. <laughs> you can't find a place to pee in the desert. Uh, going far away, I'm like, oh gosh, that's the first hurdle you have to face as a woman. <laughs> oh, I and then you suffer water. from dehydration and then whatnot, and yes. the saga continues. The breakfast ah. is here. The breakfast <laughs> is here. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh it's a beautiful candy. breakfast. This is beautiful mango. looking breakfast. This is mango chia pudding. Oh. That's a beautiful looking yes. breakfast. And this is <laughs> an acai bowl. Okay. And this is also an acai bowl. So, take oh. your pick. I think I'll have the chia pudding. Not the acai bowl? I'm surprised. <laughs> do you want the uh, chocolate one or do you oh, want sorry, the... One. Which one? This one or this the one? Mangoes, the mangoes. The mangoes are very tempting. This is chocolate. Chia. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this is chocolate acai and this is like their super bowl acai. I will try the super bowl. Yes, you're very... Yeah, I just went with color matching. Oh, yes, that's <laughs> matching. <laughs> and, uh, and that is coffee. This is coffee. Oh, thank you. Ron, do you want coffee? Are you? Uh, no, that's uh, you, you, please. <laughs> okay, all right. So, oh, wow. you can want that. So, Anita is done it best to eat most of the breakfast. <laughs> that's um, nice. What actually is it, Anita? Mm, they're actually my favorite. I'm still eating. Uh, we have two acai bowls. And then we have a mango chia seed pudding. Such amazing nourishing breakfast from Revive. We had to wait for it, but we're What's so it? happy that it's What's here it? and they're enjoying it. Certainly different and nutritious, but you know what's missing? What is missing? A tea. Tea. Sorry, Ron. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Oh, anyway, anyway. You, you are a tea person as well? Uh, oh, I'm a as, tea person oh, as well. That's why I gave away my coffee. To say. Oh. I mean, that's just so <laughs> bad. A tea person. We've got a tea person, but no tea. <laughs> Sorry, right. I'm always looking out for myself first. <laughs> I'm a coffee person. Okay, anyway, um, back to this podcast. Yes. So we just finished talking about 50-50, 50% ladies, 50% men, yes. diversity on uh, directors. That's just the start. Yes. Diversity yes. includes different nationalities, yes. different religions. Yes, and... I think we all have been very blessed enough in this kingdom. The kingdom has provided so much of opportunities for the women out here. And really, when I say I'm the only woman on field of engineering construction when I'm there, but the support system I have around me is amazing. People are so supportive, so encouraging. And the kingdom, you know, I feel the unity and diversity you can see on field out here. And it's really a blessing to have them all. It's really. So what is your leadership style? <laughs> um, my leadership style is through philanthropy. Building connections through philanthropy, as I mentioned, is if, if I'm not able to empower anyone, if I'm not able to inspire anyone, it's of no use. If I'm not able to treat anyone as equals, it's no use. I'll not be able to motivate my people. I'll be not be able to do anything with my people. Uh, even a person in my office who even fixes a screw knows that if he doesn't do that job well, the whole building can collapse. So, and with that, they also know that my people, whatever projects we do, uh, for example, whatever projects we do, we always give back to the community. The profits always go to something or the other good cause. And as I said, the circle, the cycle should not stop. And that's exactly what we are doing. What goes around comes around. You have to make sure it keeps on moving. The cycle keeps on moving. So I think that is my style of leadership is through and remember because I see myself as a servant leader. So a you person lead by example. Yeah. So you know who's there to serve people. I'm not a person who will be on top of people taking all control and no, no. We are all equals and here I'm to serve and to serve every opportunity that comes in front of me for my people and the people around me. So you lead by example. That's a yes. How about you, Anita? Do you lead by example? I think so, I do. I mean, you know my leadership style very well. Well, I don't work for you though, do I? <laughs> no, you don't. 
but yes i i also think that leading by example is how uh, you build loyalty you build yes. friendships and you true. build uh, that sense of connection yes to true, your company true. and to yourself true true and there's no other way to do it there's no other and especially in today's world there is no other way to do it when you can just uh, be online with a press of a button and a click how how much time does it take for people to just gain knowledge or learn about any kind yeah, of skill yeah. or expertise or specialization yeah it doesn't what you need is loyalty if you don't have loyalty amongst mm. your people finish you, yeah you there's no out. way you can grow yeah because skill is something they will gain with time yeah experience is something they will gain with yeah. time yeah i also kind of yeah, uh, re- highly regard uh, mm. attitude and loyalty over other things yes of course any day <laughs> yeah so um you have to tell us a little bit about your road track journey the recent ones especially what what milestones have you achieved with road track um being in road track has really been a uh, blessing being part with the rotarians working with the rotary clubs has been really a blessing got to learn so much and me and my board my team members my road trackers this year we were able to impact 127000 lives we okay. as a whole team we provided uh, water as a gift from bahrain as i that's why i keep on saying whatever you receive you have to give back to the community and in during this pandemic we all have been blessed enough to stay in this kingdom and a little slice of it we wanted to share it with africa and ghana where we provided water to nine villages as well as we have made school out there and free education for class 1 to 6 we have made playgrounds and a sanitization for toilets for women and men and as well as irrigation system for farming so they have a source of income as well and also um supplying of medicines to the maternity wards so that is something we were able to do that's and a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> so how is the money raised generally uh the money is raised through events that we do and through mm-hmm. awareness i think donations you, know, you mean uh, yeah a lot of people have come forward and donated they have been very kind enough okay. to come forward and donate you know someone donated clothes someone donated medicines so we as volunteers we worked out there like 10 days uh, straight to achieve that uh, we in fact recently we showcased a documentary yes. on our gana project as well yes, and you I, were there and i was there yes <laughs> uh so and besides that we have also help uh the blind society the autism and we are trying to provide a job opportunity for the autistic people a fashion brand of their own where they are not a burden on their family but they are also the change makers mm. and as well as a mental health uh, app as well we are planning to launch for the youth 24/7 oh, okay. that's interesting so hopefully it will be uh, declared in so. bahrain you're going to yes, launch yes yes okay. yes of course this is for the people of bahrain and we have also raised awareness about the men's mental health okay. how important it is and prostate cancer and various such projects around the year so the whole year we were able to achieve 68 projects we did for bahrain so and in one that's year a lot of <laughs> Yep. So how do you manage all of this you have so many companies you're on the field doing a lot of things yourself and then you have all these uh, uh, you know uh, charity and philanthropy projects that you do so how do you manage all of it I I have an amazing support system which you keep saying all the time I but, have I, but it's also a question wood. of time as well touch wood no I have an amazing support system who help me to achieve it as I said we have we are all born leaders so we are some way or the other empowering each other helping each other supporting each other and things and get done yeah things happen obviously we are working hard mm. behind the scenes we are working hard i'm not reaching my home like early and uh, i start off from like 4 a.m. okay i'm finishing at 1 so or you have no time hardly to sleep. you have no time to do any <laughs> netflix so, no. blend but this is the time no. but this is the time to struggle or work and no play That's what I was, I, I was getting at. I was like, so you. That was Sanima a question has... I'm here from Anita, not, not me. Yeah. So, so it's like you don't have time to go on a Netflix binge, or uh, it's you know. it's been a while though. I have watched Netflix to be honest. Really? But yeah, I I do have a small doggy whom I play with. <laughs> she's there. She's there. It's good that uh, she's not. Uh, you know, her name is Tiku. And oh, it's sweet. it's good that she can't sue us for the name. <laughs> I was I was uh, planning to keep her like Tweety, and suddenly she responds to Tiku. So it's good, but uh, what, what breed is it? It's a Shih Tzu. Oh, even I have a Shih Tzu. <laughs> Yay! We have in the Shih Tzu club something same pinch. Yeah, and I have a, I have a boy. I have three. I have a girl. Terriers. Oh, I have a girl. You have a boy. Uh. Well, let's talk after this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> and yeah, he's very grumpy. He doesn't like anyone. Oh my, my one is a attractive one. <laughs> oh sweet. Maybe she'll change it. Oh, no. um, okay, this became a dog. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> Maybe no, but uh, vet next time. But miles to go before I sleep, and I feel there is really less time and so much to do. Yeah, and um, really so much to do. Miles you're to go. You're making I every sleep. minute count. Isn't that how it is? Trying. Mm. I'm really trying. I'm really trying to learn. Uh, to be honest, I'm just trying to learn. I'm not even um, saying I'm here to do the. No, I'm trying to learn. I'm. I'm trying to make up for the time. of i wish my father was here with me to guide me so i'm trying to make up for that time by learning as much as i can to make my parents proud to make my people who are working day and night they really work hard and it's for them you know for their families because at the end of the day you have to think like this it's not about running companies or being a chairperson of anything no yeah you have to make sure at the end of the day you bring food onto the table for all those families who are depending on you yes. that what matters at the end of the day it depends that when you are giving them and they are receiving it matters that people around you are also not suffering you try to help them some way or the other mm. as well and that's how you know it stays the kids the kids will still believe i feel that the belief system are changing these days mm. that belief is gone the trust is gone yeah. i feel um i have seen a time once where people used to work on trust do they trust each other now no 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 not why not. absolutely not yeah yeah That's why true. why can't we trust each other same human race why can't we trust each other why can't we work together why can't we help people who are genuinely suffering why are rich are getting rich poor are getting poor where where is the imbalance something is wrong something is going wrong something needs to be addressed some voices needs to be heard and you know a commendable job you all are doing is bringing those voices forward and like kudos to both of you for doing so i don't know like, i mean <laughs> i have no answer to that <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> but i think uh, the nima what i have to say after meeting you and talking to you is that you've got a very different mindset um it's Thank not you. every day that you would see somebody who's ambitious and driven but not just for herself but for everybody around her as well so right. that's really commendable and um, thank you that's so kind yes and so and kind. it's not every day that we we'll pa- our paths cross with somebody like that cuz um, so thank you so much for coming in yes if, thank you very thank much you. <laughs> but what's next after road track now uh rotrack then still leave me i'm still the vice president this year and as well as i'll be representing burian at the district 2452 but besides that i'm working with an amazing talented and inspiring woman and we are launching our charity on mental health so which we'll be announcing soon oh, this I'm month oh excited to you know and it's know just that, that people everyone silently are struggling with something on the other for them to know we are there we care for each other we are there for each other as i mentioned in the beginning you should keep mm. the hope and faith alive keep it alive for the future generations at least we have to keep it alive so hopefully this small thing will help some way or the other what That's an awesome. ending that was it is <laughs> yeah. amazing like we feel really charged up meeting <laughs> you and you. talking to you so thank you tanima thank for coming thank you that's so thank kind thank you very much i'm really, really glad you. that you thank could you. spend this time with us and I, ho- i hope you enjoyed your pudding oh yeah it's nice the king after we like mango i love mango that's great it's a mango season it is okay thank you so much thank you thank you and thank you for watching this podcast we be we feel very inspired and charged up because tanima was with us and we've been speaking about so many wonderful things that she's been doing um do watch us uh on youtube at mh consultants and keep following us on instagram at mh consultants_bahrain thank you so much thank you very much <laughs>